Iology is the science and art of evaluating various human qualities via markings and colorings in the front part of the eyes. Iology involves any one or more of several specific studies including iridology and sclerology. This presentation focuses on ways of performing an examination of the irises or colored parts of the eyes and the scleras or whites of the eyes. There are various ways of doing iology evaluations. The simplest is to look in the eyes with nothing more than natural sunlight. A step above that is the use of simple handheld devices like a pocket loop magnifier and an LED light. The next step up is eye photography which allows us to record what we have seen and immediately review those markings in the client's presence. Plus there's the opportunity for before and after studies and research. We can increase the depth of study even more via slit lamp microscopy. Another level of sophistication is the use of certain computer programs. Let's look. The practitioner's first contact with the client is usually over the telephone by either you or your office staff. Then email them a health questionnaire, which they return before their first appointment. As ophthalmologists know, eye markings are generic. No names of diseases are written on the eyes. Instead, we observe the special way the eyes show body tissues. We will not have to look far because the eyes are literally packed with helpful data. While ophthalmologists look at the map at the back of the eyes, iologists observe the map at the front. Receiving and reviewing the patient's health questionnaire helps us have a sense of what they understand about their condition, an advantage to the healer. Now we can add what their eyes are saying. Notice something special about the iology evaluation process. It is comfortable for the client, non-invasive, non-painful, non-dangerous, non-toxic, completely natural, and relatively inexpensive. Even with all these pluses, iology is not an end in itself. No test is. The eclectic approach is always best in health evaluations. The smart healer uses every data source available – blood tests, surgery reports, MRI, X-ray and CAT scans, notes from chiropractors, acupuncturists, massage technicians, and so on. Of the many eye markings – lines, colors, gels, and so forth – some are more easily seen than others. Many sclera signs need no magnification, but most iris markings require at least a little. If none is available, place the person near a bright window or other area with plenty of light in front of them. Sit slightly diagonally across from your client. For the iris exam, have them look straight at a point in the middle of your forehead and just above your nose while you view their pupils and irises. For the scleras, have the client glance straight up at the 12 o'clock position for viewing their lower quadrants. You, the client, or an assistant will help by pulling down their lower lids for those lower body sclera views. The client gazes at 6 o'clock for their upper quadrant views, while we pull up the upper lids so we can see the brain area quadrants. We have them look at 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock for their lateral and medial quadrants while we separate the lids with the thumb and forefinger for those views. Just be sure they are looking as close as possible to 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 9 o'clock so you can get the correct views of the data within those quadrants. Within 15 minutes you should have all the basic information you need for a preliminary evaluation. With iris and sclera blanks attached to a clipboard and using colored pencils you can draw the more important markings that you see. Then compare their intake data with what you just saw in their eyes. Now you can provide them with a verbal or written outline of what you consider are the most important features of their condition as you interpret it. After viewing any other data that you have, you may then make your basic health recommendations accordingly. 
No self-respecting iologist is ever without the handy four-power Bosch & Lomb pocket loop magnifier and a common LED light. Regardless of whatever other equipment you have, however sophisticated, these two go wherever you go. You never know when you are going to need them. Aside from a bit of technique, the iology evaluation is the same with these two tools as it is with the no tools exam. Sit slightly diagonally across from your client and lean forward. For the iris exam, start with the client's left eye. Hold the loop magnifier in your left hand. Place your middle finger on the client's mid forehead, slightly above their nose. Ask the client to look at a point in the middle of your forehead. With your right hand holding the LED light, Bring the light from the side of the head so that it is shining into the eye area from the side. Never shine the light directly into the client's eyes from the front and at a level of the eye itself. This is a sure way to irritate them. Shining from the front and below can be okay if done at a steep enough angle. Move the light around to see the tiny hills and valleys and all the special iris markings at the various angles, heights, and depths. Exchange hands with the light and magnifier for the right eye exam. For the sclera exam, have your assistant or the patient raise their upper and lower their lower lids and widen their lids. This will give you a good view of both sclera quadrants and research angles. The research angles are the angles in between the quadrant views. On the sclera gaze guide, they are represented by the numbers 2, 4, 6, and 8. In the manual photo exam, we use a quality off-the-shelf camera with a macro lens, plus a specially made lighting system that is usually attached to the front of the camera lens. This setup can be either manually handheld or mounted on a tripod or tabletop arrangement. The term manually handheld means you hold the camera freely, usually with your elbows and your client's elbows supported on a table. Sitting diagonally across from each other, the patient places their chin on the ball of their right palm while their fingers cover their right eye. Their left thumb and forefinger, or those of your assistant, are used to separate the lids of their left iris for the left iris photos. Reverse this process for the right iris photos. Just before the photos are taken, make sure the patient's head is in the proper orientation. Always check the view screen on the back of the camera for photo clarity, angle, brightness, and so on. Take one or more of the same images if and as necessary. Here is your checklist for the irises. 1. Is the client's face in a vertical plane, or is it tilted forward or backward, or to one side or the other? 2. Can you see the whole iris? If not, if part of the iris is obscured by a drooping lid or a finger, for example, do another image. 3. Is the image centered? That is, is the patient looking straight ahead into the center of the lens? If so, you have the best chance of getting the best photo. 4. Is the image clear as you look through the eyepiece of the camera? If not, you may need to adjust the diopter switch near the eyepiece, slightly move closer or further away from the client, or simply use more light on the eye. As soon as you can see a sharply focused image, take another shot, or as many more as needed, to get a good clear one. 5. Point the camera's reticle or crosshairs at the middle of the pupil before taking your iris photo. 6. Is the lighting correct? That is, do you have the right exposure for this iris color? If the image you have taken is too dark, it will be harder to read the eye markings. Adjust the camera's exposure setting accordingly. For example, 
A good aperture setting for the Nikon D3200 with a 102mm lens is f29 for blue irises. Getting nice bright photos at the start will minimize or eliminate the need for Photoshop brightness and contrast enhancements later. Okay, let's look at a checklist for sclera images. 1. Make sure your aperture setting is right for scleras. For a Nikon D3200 with a 102mm lens, the f-stop is 40. 2. Can you see plenty of sclera real estate? If the lids have been rightly retracted or spread, you will see lots of quadrant or research angle data. 3. Check your client's gaze angle. Are they looking at one of the four cardinal compass points for the quadrants, and in between these for the research angles? Right gaze angle is crucial for accurately locating sclera markers. 4. Be sure to take your research angle photos. They can provide many needed special details. 5. Are you pointing the camera reticle or crosshairs to the right part of the sclera so that at least some pupil will be available in your finished photos for accurate marker map locating? Biology imaging system support stands allow for more stable, precise, and accurate photo imaging, especially when the sclera gaze guide is added. With a tabletop setup, the patient is seated at a table with their chin placed on the tabletop's chin cup and their forehead against the headrest. Your assistant, or the patient, retracts the lids, exposing the irises and scleras. Be sure their head is adjusted to the position optimum for the photos. The rest of the procedure is the same as for manual photo exams. The procedure for photo taking with a, a tripod or floor standing setup is virtually the same as with the table stand. A slit lamp is a microscope designed specifically for examining eyes, both to measure visual acuity for prescribing eyeglasses and to detect disease processes in the eyes. The procedure for slit lamp iology evaluations is similar to that for the common photo exam already described. Unless your slit lamp has a special photo attachment, the slit lamp exam is essentially a live exam. It has the advantage of viewing the live eye in 12 power to 32 power or more. Viewing a live eye through a slit lamp is a truly delightful and exhilarating experience for the iologist. In another video, we further explore slit lamp evaluation technique. Our written document called Conducting an Iology Exam has more elaboration and certain details unable to be covered in this presentation. Contact us at iology.com for a copy.